The drugs that are out there, all five of the drugs, we were part of their research. So now there's two injectable IV medications uh, that replace the protein C1 esterase inhibitor that people are deficient in. One is uh, approved for prophylaxis, the other one for what we call on-demand or therapy of acute attacks. The reason why there's two separate drugs with different indications, even though they, they are the exact same C1 esterase inhibitor is because of the orphan drug rules or laws by the FDA. There's also uh, two uh, sub-2 injections, one that inhibits the calocrine and then the other one that inhibits the bradykinin receptor and they both work well. And then there's just recently approved, in the, within the last six weeks, a recombinant C1 inhibitor that's uh, made in rabbits in the mammary glands of rabbits and they take the milk out, purify the C1 esterase inhibitor, that's human um, genetic material derived, and then concentrate that for injection for attacks. What we're also doing now is studying some of the newer medications coming out. So there's two uh, that are both C1 inhibitor again, same companies that make them for IV, but they're being studied for subcutaneous use, so it's easier for people to self-inject. Uh, the other thing with that is that we're doing good dose range in studies, so hopefully we'll find a dose that actually maybe inhibits 100% of attacks. I mean, that's, that would be perfect. We might not obtain that, but hopefully close to it. And then there's also a pill being studied, uh, but unfortunately right now it requires multiple pills multiple times a day. So it will have some benefit, but that will be a burden having to take so much medication. And then there's also a monoclonal antibody being studied where it will be once every three weeks, maybe once every two weeks, and that hopefully by inhibiting calocrine will inhibit the bradykinin from being uh, produced, which leads to the swelling that we see in hereditary angioedema. So again, it's a really kind of fabulous time to be a doctor in this field because so much has happened and we can offer so much to our patients where we never could before. Obviously though, as I mentioned, that even though we've done a great job at treating acute attacks, we still have a long way to go to prevent attacks, but I'm hoping in the next five years that'll be actually a much better scenario for the patients.